Hi everyone, this is Elizabeth Long and Addo Mangoji. We are Canadian immigration lawyers at the firm of Long Mangoji. Today we wanted to provide you with some information about how to be with your family members in Canada. Currently, because of the COVID-19 situation, there are some travel bans that are in place in Canada. Um, however, some family members may be able to join um, their, their loved ones in Canada. Ado, can you provide us with some details about this? Certainly. So I think the first thing that we should talk about is who is a family member. So who they've defined as family members are married spouses, common law partners, dependent children under the age of 22, and also their kids, parents, and also um, the partners of parents, and guardians. So if your family member is either a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, then you're exempt from the travel ban, which is really great. So you are able to enter. You still need your visa or your ETA, and you need to demonstrate to the airline agent proof of your family status with the individual. And based on that, they should allow you to board the plane. Now, Ado, that's great, but there are still some reports of CBSA officers, even when someone has been able to get on the plane, by the time they get to the airport, the CBSA officers are returning them uh, and not, in, not letting them enter Canada. Uh, can you uh, let us know why this is the case? You're absolutely correct. We are hearing reports of CBSA officers rejecting entry to immediate family members, both at the airports and also at the land borders. And the reason that they're giving for these rejections is they're finding that coming to see your family member is not considered essential travel. One of the requirements for the travel ban right now is that everybody who's entering Canada is doing it only for essential travel. So what they're saying is um, that people can't come just to visit or for tourism purposes, even if they have immediate family members in Canada. It does have to be an essential reason, such as caring for family members with COVID or other reasons. So you do need to be able to prove your status as family member, as well as you need to be able to explain why your travel is essential. Now, for those people who don't want to take the risk that they can't come to Canada when they get to the border, is there any way to, for them to get a pre-approval? Yes, there actually is. And the pre-approvals are important for those, those individuals as well as individuals whose family members are temporary residents in Canada. So if your family member is a student or a foreign worker that's working here, you're not automatically exempt from the travel ban. You actually have to obtain a letter in advance from consular services to be able to come to Canada. And so basically what you can do is demonstrate at the border, you could uh, provide this letter as well as proof of your family status, and then you will be allowed to enter. Now, in case of those who want to be in Canada, and they're already in Canada, they want to stay longer in Canada. Um, what should they do? That's one of the most uh, frequent questions that we're getting right now. Essentially, it is family members who during the quarantine were in Canada as visitors and they went into quarantine with their family and now they're very reluctant and do not want to go back and do and can't and so in some cases can't even really travel back uh, travel back because of travel bans in other countries. So we're seeing this on both for temporary and, per and permanent residents, people who want to stay here temporarily for longer and people who want to stay here permanently. The people that we're seeing are most often are individuals that were here for six months um, on visitor statuses. And one of the things that you can do is you can extend it from within Canada. So while you're in Canada, you can extend that, but you need to remember that it's very important that you apply for this extension of your status before your status runs out. And if you do that, you will be allowed to stay in Canada until a decision is made on that extension. 
Right. So if you have visitor status and the default is six months, um, sometimes if it's more or less, whatever it says that you are allowed to stay in Canada, you must file the extension before it runs, the time runs out. Okay. Um, now, what if they are interested in permanent residence? Any advice you can give on that? Yeah, so we're getting a lot of people who are contacting us and saying, you know what, I now want to stay in Canada permanently with my spouse or my family members. In those cases, the most popular application that we're doing right now is what we call the open spousal um, work permit along with the in Canada spousal sponsorship application. So basically, if your spouse, um, common law spouse or married spouse is in Canada and is a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, they can sponsor you um, to stay in Canada with them. You can submit the application within Canada. And at the same time, as long as you're legal in Canada, you can also apply for an open spousal work permit. So you are able to work in Canada while the application is in process. So there are a lot of intricacies on these kind of applications. Uh, we can't really get into them given the short time period on this video. Uh, but if you have questions, please do feel free to ask us. Because of the COVID situation, um, IRCC, they're still processing applications, but they may be taking a much longer time than before. Um, and how immigration goes, it's, it's usually a first come, first serve basis. So you do want to submit those permanent resident applications as soon as you can in order to get your place on. Okay, um, that's all for today. Um, we'll be happy to um, guide you along the way. If you have any questions, please do email us at inquiries at lmlawgroup.com. Stay safe, guys, and stay healthy. Take care. Thank you, everyone.